Disclaimer, Jackbet's content is not meant to replace the actual viewing experience of watching RuPaul's Drag Race. The videos discuss the content of the show, but they don't nearly make as much sense without the context of watching the episode. You can watch Season 15 of Drag Race on MTV or WoW Presents Plus if you're outside the US. Season 15's Lip Sync Lollapurooza just happened, and I think it's probably the second or best episode of the season so far. The lip syncs of this episode, there was only one flop, but at least there was a funny joke in it. But overall, there's just so many performers in this cast, it is so entertaining. And one of the best parts that I'll come back to when I run through the lip syncs is that all of these performers aren't the same, and they're all being praised for having different levels of performance. There's people who can do the tricks and the stunts, but then there's also people who can just really embody the song, and both of that is rewarded in this episode, and that is just perfect. I'm quickly going to go over the three beginning scenes because most of the episode is just on the main stage, but they're setting up a couple things here that I do want to talk about. Lucy is starting to get a bitter edit, and I think that's really, really interesting. Interesting. She had a really cool three episode arc right in the beginning and then hasn't really had anything since they've barely put her in the edit at all. But after she went off in Untucked last week, I feel like they're now going to start to look at her again, but in a different way. Now that they know these placements are getting to her, they may start to shift into toying with her in the way they kind of are doing with Marsha. I talked about last week how I felt like they're trying to do the same thing with Marsha that they've done with Jan, but Marsha is honestly not really budging in the same way. Marsha's frustrated, but it isn't coming out in the same way, then walks in Lucy, who is so mad and feels like she deserves that top spot. So now the queens are acknowledging her frustrations, or how Mistress puts it, drag delusions. And then later in the episode, they got on her for taking the easy way out by picking Spice in the Lollapurooza. So it's seeming like they're starting to be a little more critical of Lucy, and this may be her storyline going into the next part of the season. Either she's going to get it back together and prove them all wrong, or flame out in a glorious way. I'd be happy to see either, honestly. It just seems like a lot of the queens are getting a little tired of it, and like I've said, if they're showing it in the edit, it kind of matters for the season. Spice is still here to have a good time. She's just kind of taking advantage of the situation, even though she isn't doing that great. And the vibes that she's putting off, even when she isn't doing that great in the competition, it's kind of setting her up for the rest of the episode. She's just overall a good person to have around in the eyes of all these queens. People just really, really like her. And so potentially, if a queen has to pick someone to save at the very end of the episode, I wonder who they pick. Then it moves on to the next day, and Mistress literally just gives us a full-on checklist of what we need to look out for for the rest of the episode. It gets to the point, we got a lot of lip syncs to go through, but it's just so on the nose. Marsha, Lucy, and Spice are the goal. Stay away from Anitra and Sasha, and you're golden. And then we immediately hit the main stage, and this is one of the quickest times that we've gotten to the main stage on any episode of any franchise. The rules are then set up, and I get PTSD from that bingo roller, to be completely honest. There's a lot of speculation out there on whether the bingo balls are actually random or not. I think for specific rounds, they may weigh someone's name in a little more than others, just to make sure that the narrative can kind of go the way they want. I think the Lollapurooza is also really good to get queens to lip sync who may not really get the chance to lip sync on a regular episode. Sasha and Anitra come to mind, or Daya and Jasmine last season. Sometimes they don't want to mess up a queen's narrative or their momentum in the competition, so this is a good excuse to see some really cool lip syncs and get a narrative going without having to put someone in the bottom. So first up, we got Malaysia and Marsha, and one thing that Mistress said earlier was that Marsha was one of the easy targets, but did we not see the talent show? Marsha is trained in dance, and that can transfer pretty easily to lip syncing. I'm surprised that they thought that she was wasn't that good. And Marsha did turn it. I think Malaysia did really hold her own, but I think the clear winner was Marsha. Spice versus Lucy was one of the weaker lip syncs. I think they were both around even, and I guess Lucy did kind of win it. I also completely forgot that in a confessional, Selena brought up that Lucy is close to cracking, so that also just kind of adds fire to that storyline. But speaking of someone cracking that they also started to set up this episode, Lux versus Selena happened, and Selena killed it. I feel like she could have definitely gone either way with more comedy or more serious, but I think the balance that she had was perfect. I think it was really smart on Selena's part to pick this ballad because she's really familiar with it and Lux's wheelhouse is a lot more performance and stunt and tricks and I think that's what Lux tried to bring here and it's a lot more comfortable to her but it just didn't fit completely. And then soon after this lip sync they start to say that it looks like Lux is starting to crack just a little bit. She's been framed to have this uber confidence this season that has been so entertaining to watch but the way that it's portrayed it feels like we're hitting the same note and I don't think that's what Lux is really like. So I'm excited to see her get more with this potential storyline. I really like Jax versus Mistress. It could have gone either way. A lot of people said that Jax won it, but this is what I was talking about earlier. It feels like Mistress's style is a lot different than Jax's and a lot more old school, like a lot of people have been saying. And so the fact that it was rewarded, I'm very, very happy because she did really good in this lip sync. And then Mistress gets back to the workroom and there's a lot of pushback on her win. I am so interested to see where this goes. Mistress hasn't held back the season with saying the things that she wants to say, and I think 
think it is so refreshing and so interesting to follow. And now that people are kind of underestimating her, I want to see what she does moving forward. Like everyone's been saying, Anitra vs. Sasha has been one of the best lip syncs we've seen in a while, definitely the best of the season so far. The energy, the tricks, it was all there. I'm just sad that it was to a fifth harmony song for Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> I think Anitra held her own, but I mean, it's just Sasha Colby. She is a masterclass in how to lip sync. Like when Anitra, who's one of the best performers on the season, is scared to go up against Sasha, that says something. I really don't want to see these two lip sync again unless it's for the crown or maybe like a top two, but if it does end up happening, we'll be blessed with another amazing performance. A lot of people said that this should be a double Shantae, and I do agree, I do definitely see that. But I do think they had a fail safe in mind, so that's why it wasn't a double Shantae. Spice versus Malaysia was funny because neither of them knew the words and it was just chaos. Toxic people online were getting on them for not knowing the words as if they didn't have to memorize like six songs for this episode. Oh shit, I don't know the words either. <laughs> So some songs are just going to fall through the cracks. It wasn't a good lip sync, but let's just be grateful that this was the only one. Honestly, I don't have much to say about the three-way lip sync. I thought it was good. I thought it was fun. People were saying that Anitra won. Yeah, arguably so, but I think Lux also did a really good job as well as Jax. And I think the queens in the workroom were right to assume that two queens would be saved here, especially because all three of them did so good. It just wouldn't make as much sense because the numbers would be going off going into the final lip sync. But then we get to the twist and I just don't know how I feel about it. Part of me thinks that it was just there to save Spice, but I don't know, why would they make it just so obviously that? It's just so out of left field, I don't know why it was there because Spice could have won one of the other lip syncs because they were about even. I mean, Spice herself thought that she was going home at this point in her drag career, she just wasn't a performer. It just seemed like the writing was on the wall when she lost the next lip sync and it was just her against Anitra and Jax. So for the showrunners to put this twist out there, I just really don't know how I feel about it because there's just so many factors at play. What it does set up though that I really enjoy is the rise of Anitra. First, I just want to say Anitra's whole reasoning behind saving Spice outside of it just not really being a fair chance for Spice is the fact that Anitra just really, really likes Spice and just wants to keep her there. But that was explained behind the scenes while on TV, we got a really badass depiction of Anitra. Jax has been shown to be a really strong lip syncer, so for her to choose Jax over Spice to lip sync against, that is a power move. Another thing that I really like about these Lala Perusas is that we get to know the queens a lot more. It's just a great way to showcase queens. Everyone gets their own little moment, aside from Jax this episode, but I'll get to that. And they often just breathe new life into storylines where they start to slow down. And Anitra, though doing pretty well in the competition the entire time, hasn't really been in the edit very much. She won the first episode and then was safe for the next three weeks, then she was low, and then last week she was high, but even then we didn't really get that much content with her. So for her to pop back in like this and do all these power moves, I don't know, it's looking pretty good for her. I feel like this episode was the ticket they needed to go full in on Anitra, and I'm really excited to see where she goes from here. The final lip sync was good, but I think a lot of people agree that Nina versus Aja was still better, and I just feel so weird over Jax right now. People have now pointed out on Twitter where this may be a new storyline forming, the lip sync assassin goes home in the lip sync Lala Perusa. It happened last season with Jasmine, and now it's happening with Jax here. But for Jasmine, a lot of the narrative of the episode was focused around her, while here, it just feels like Jax was shafted. We got very few confessionals with them, not a lot of people were even talking about them in the episode. It just seems like they moved on already, and that was really frustrating. Like I said earlier, everyone got their little bits to talk about their strategy, talk about people underestimating them, and from what I can recall, Jax didn't get that. Jax is definitely a queen though that I can see coming back for an all-star season and doing super well. I quickly want to talk about some comparisons to another season. Is this episode as good as season 14? I don't think so, but I think it's setting up a lot of things and it may pay off more in the end. With how season 15 is playing out, it feels like season 14 is just aging better and better. A lot of similar beats have been hit in season 15 aside from like all the non-eliminations and for the most part I feel like the execution in season 14 was just stronger. If the parallels keep continuing I'm definitely going to do a video on it and one of the prime examples that I'll look towards is the slip sync Lala Perusa and why season 14 does it better. I don't think it's bad in season 15 but I feel like a lot of the novelty or a lot of what made season 14 so strong just wasn't as present. What makes season 14 so fresh and so good even with multiple Lala Perusas before it is how it's framed and set up. All of them did so bad 
bad in Snatch Game, so now they're getting punished by having to do this, and it's just really interesting because we don't know what's going to happen. While in Season 15, it's not set up as well, it just feels like we're going through the motions, like, oh, look, we're lip syncing, guys, that's what we're doing. And you can honestly extend this idea out to every single SmackDown before Season 15. Even the not-so-good ones like Canada 2 or Season 13, they felt like a big monumental point in the season. Eliminated queens are brought back, there's a game within a game, the queens are getting punished, you have to lip sync to get to the finale, they're playing Mental Warfare with you, and that's just season 13. There's a reason they're happening, and my biggest critique with season 15s is that it now just feels like another challenge. And that's honestly just something I've been trying to shake off with season 15, but it's been so hard to do. Partially with the edit, and maybe some other factors that we don't really know, it feels like a lot of the season is just going through the motions, and we don't really have a lot of innovation. And I mean, on the show side of things, the queens are still doing really great. There's still a lot of time to do some fresh things. I mean, early on in the season, we got the split premiere that was still in the same episode, kind of like that double premiere. And they also did the Super Size Snatch game, so they're trying things, but right now it just feels a little stale. I don't need them to constantly switch up the format, but especially with these Smackdowns, I feel like they forgot what made it so special. Hopefully it's just the mid-season rut and we have a lot of good episodes coming up. I feel like that is the case. When going through a longer season, you can't really appreciate as much as you can with hindsight. So maybe down the line, I'll look back and be like, oh, actually the season wasn't actually that stale. We'll see what happens with time. We're getting set up nicely for the end game. I feel like everyone has a pretty good storyline going, maybe except for Selena, so I'm a little worried about her. Mistress Lucy and Lux got their foundation shook just a little bit, so I'm looking at them going forward, and I feel like with this episode, Anitra has set herself up very nicely going forward. Stay on this aside, I still love this show, and I still love talking about the show. If you haven't seen my recap of the trip to Nashville, please go watch that video, it's a really fun time. I got some fun stuff coming up, so I will see you soon with another video.